We all stand for prayer, please. (laughs) Jerome, would you pray for us? Yes, Heavenly Father, thank thee this morning, Lord. We bless you for a wonderful day. You've given us, Lord, such a beauty, Lord Jesus, and strength. We thank thee, Lord, for life and health. We thank you for this precious opportunity, Lord. Oh, Lord, look down upon us. Pour out that spirit upon us this man, God. Bless his service this morning, Lord, and we just ask you, bless for the grace that we need to carry us in the Lord. Bless the singing, bless the testimony, Lord. Bless the prayers, Lord. Bless the offering, Lord. Bless our dear brother as he preaches, Lord. Bless his own service, Lord. We're asking that your blessed will be accomplished. I know all that you do. Give the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I guess most of you already know that I can't, I'm not real good at praying in public. <laughs> uh, I messed that up again today when I get, when I get asked to pray for it, but I'm still, I don't mind, I don't mind being called upon and being humiliated because it, <laughs> it only makes me better. <laughs> but I do apologize. Uh, Reverend Wooten asked me to remind everybody that Tuesday night instead of prayer meeting at 7.30 there's communion. So we'll have communion here at the chapel at 7, 7.30. That's New Year's Eve night. So, and I believe that's all I got. Dave, you want to sing for us? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Steve. Good morning again. Praise the name of the Lord. Appreciate your kind attention. Praise God. Well, we're certainly glad to be in chapel this morning, worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Turn over, if you would. To, to what? Turn over to what? Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. I wasn't lucky this morning. Turn over to 218. 218. 
lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen, that bears repeating. Praise God. Amen. 498, if you would, 498. More about Jesus would I know, more of his grace to others show, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be. Showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. Us, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne, riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming prince of peace. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus. Us, more of his saving fullness see, more of his love who died for me. Amen. Praise God. I trust that's the cry of your heart to learn more about Jesus. You know, he is the word. He is the living word. We, if we immerse ourselves in his word, we'll come to know him better. Praise God. 648. 648. So good to see our visitors this morning. 648. Scripture here is 1 Corinthians 15, 57, paraphrased as, Thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Really? It was a test. I passed that one. There we go. They who know the Savior shall in Him be strong, mighty in the conflict of the right against wrong. This the blessed promise given in God's word. Doing wondrous exploits, they who know the Lord. Oh, victory, victory, blessed blood-bought victory. Victory, victory, victory all the time. As Jehovah liveth, strength divine he giveth. Unto those who know him, victory all the time. In the midst of battle, be thou not dismayed. Though the power of darkness against thee are arrayed, God thy strength is with thee, causing thee to stand. 
Heaven's allied armies wait at thy command. O oh, victory, victory, blessed blood by victory. Victory, victory, victory all the time. As Jehovah live, strength divine he give unto those who know him victory all the time. Brave to bear life's testing, strong the foe to meet, walking like a hero midst the furnace heat, doing wondrous exploits with the spirit sword. Winning souls for Jesus, praise, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, victory, victory, blessed blood bought victory. Victory, victory, victory all the time. As Jehovah live, strength divine he give unto those who know him victory all the time. Amen. All right. Anyone have a anything to be thankful for? A testimony? Anything? like to I'd like to remember my my friend Larry he passed away last Monday we talked about it briefly in Bible study and uh, I was telling everyone that he and I had just talked several times in the last couple of months about he and I are both the same age lived around in the same town and we both drank a lot and smoked a lot spoke for what 40 years, and drank and drank and drank and did some drugs, not a whole lot, but some, and he's he's convinced and, you know, I, I can't argue with him that that was probably what done him in. Uh, he'd, he'd, he'd been quit all of it for 15, 15, 16 years, but 
You know, that stuff don't just, when you stop, all that 40 years of abusing your body don't just go away. So, um, anyway, I'd like to pray for his family and Lars's family, because I'm, I'm sure Lars, he had a rough time too. So, I'd like to remember both of their families. Mark? Yes, sir. Um, my dad's in the hospital. He's going to see our chemotherapy. And he had back fractures for the last few weeks. My fiance's grandma is going through the same thing. You know, dying from night to week too. And I lost one of my friends over the uh, juggle on the 22nd. I just found out, like, just now. Okay. Mr. Black. DJ? Uh, my daughter Charlene and my grandchildren and myself that the doctor finally speaks up and tells me what's going on. They found out some stuff that they're not telling and especially spoken to me. Okay. Is that Ed back there? Ed? Deborah. Miss Black. Okay. Yes, sir. Spoken. Okay. Doug? Many of us have the congestive stuff. Right. Sickness. Yep. Okay. We pray for the ledgers. They'll probably be coming back this week, I, I guess, in the next, next couple week. of days. Prayer, travel to mercies for them and be Jerome, his family. And Reverend Wooten brings the message today. All right.
will stand for prayer, please. Joe, would you pray for us? Lead us. Dear Lord, we thank you again this morning for the privilege we have to look to you. Thank you for prayer. We can have communion, dear Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning for an opportunity we have to be here with this congregation. Lord, we praise you and thank you because you can look down upon us. You can give us your smile of approval, worshiping you and lifting up your name. Lord, we pray that you would undertake for every man and every woman that's here, dear Lord, today. We pray, speak to their lives and speak to their hearts and help us, dear Jesus, to realize we need to draw nigh to you so that you'll draw nigh to us, we pray. Our Father, we ask you to help those that are unsaved, get a hold of their hearts and shake them up and let them realize, dear Lord, there is a plan that you have, dear Lord, for mankind, and that's to save us, redeem us, and to buy us back from the oxen block of sin. Praise God forever. Lord, we pray today that you would undertake for the many requests that have been made known. We pray for Jerome's family, his cousins especially, dear Lord. Father, we just pray that you would have your will and your way in their life and their heart, dear Lord, as they lay this loved one to rest. We pray for Lars' family. Lord, you see those, dear Father, that are kin to him, and we pray, Lord, that you would comfort them in this hour of bereavement. Lord, we pray that you would touch this man that has lost his wife and lost his mother. Lord, we just pray that you would have your will and your way in their lives and touch them, dear Jesus, and let them turn to you, we pray. Father, we pray for the unspoken requests this morning, all that were made known, dear Lord, by uplifted hands and whatever. You see every hand that was represented and what it was that was behind it that was asking for special prayer. We pray, dear Lord, for the ones, dear Jesus, that are going through a stressful time. You're able, dear Lord, to help them to realize they can turn all of that over to you. And we don't need to be anxious for anything. Praise God forever. Lord, we can just depend upon you and you'll give us peace and you'll give us rest, dear Lord, in this old heavy burdened world. We pray, dear Lord, today that you would just have your precious way, our Father, with the hour. Dear Lord, we pray as we dedicate Isaiah this morning, we pray, dear Lord, that you would bless this family. Let this family, dear Lord, come to a place of founding their family, their lives, and their very children, dear Lord, upon the principles of godliness. We ask you, dear Lord, to give us thy help as we speak. Father, we just praise you and thank you for all your mighty hand upon us, we pray. Thank you again for your great help, dear Lord, day by day. And Lord, we praise you and thank you for all that you're doing. Glorify yourself, we pray. Let your hand of mercy rest upon the remaining portion of this service. And Lord, let, don't let us go out without having, dear Lord, thy spirit to speak to every heart. We pray, thank you again this morning for your loving kindness to us and your blessings. Touch us in Jesus' precious name. In thy name we pray, amen. Okay, while the ushers are coming, I just want to say my friend Larry was not the Larry that lived here. I just want to make that clear. It's a different Larry. <laughs> okay.
Okay, it's time for Reverend Wooten to see what he has for us today. Reverend Wooten. We'd like to welcome our visitors this morning. Praise the Lord. And, and they have a baby, a precious infant they want to dedicate to the Lord this morning. Christening, as it were. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. He will gather, he will gather the gems for his kingdom, all the pure ones, the bright ones, his love and his own like the stars of the morning his bright crown adorning they shall shine in their beauty bright gems for his crown little children little children who love their redeemer are the jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Well, good morning to everybody. Good morning. I think this thing is working. Am I right? You got it on back there? All right. Well, we're certainly glad to be here the last Sunday of 2019, and we'll be facing 2020 here in just a few days. And when you look at it, you think, wow, um, we kind of look at the old things and look to new things. But this morning, we have something just a little bit different for us. Um, Howard and Andrea have asked us if we would dedicate their baby Isaiah for them. And so uh, this morning was chosen as the time to do that. And so it's a new beginning for them as a family and also as Isaiah's life begins. And we want them to be able to understand what it is to bring your child to the Lord, offer your child to the Lord, and keep him under God's protection as he grows up. Amen. And hopefully then, somewhere out there, he'll become a godly man and be able maybe to preach the gospel. You never know what God has for us out there. Well, this morning, let's look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. 1 Samuel <clears throat> chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1, beginning in verse 27. I still hear some pages flicking. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Father, we thank you again this morning for the privilege we have to read the word. 
And Lord, we're thankful that as we come before you today, we come, dear Lord, with a, a dedication process of bringing a child to you, dear Jesus, offering him, dear Lord, to you that you might be able to use him in the service. And Lord, we pray that we might be able to give the parents charge this morning, their responsibilities and what they need to do, we pray. Thank you again this morning for all that you've done. And Lord, we're glad they're willing to lend their child back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We have here a picture uh, of a woman who's desperate to have a child. And she was not very favorable to those around about her, though the scripture tells us that her husband loved her greatly. And it was a wonderful thing. And evidently, he kind of maybe gave her a little bit more attention because she was childless. But when you come to the place of where a woman at that day and time was childless, we see that they were kind of scorned. They were put aside. They, they couldn't produce. They weren't able to bring forth an heir for the man. And so that was very, very important to that generational time. But we see here this morning that this lady came to the altar and sought God's face, prayed and asked the Lord to give her a child. And if God would give her one, then what she would do is give him back to the Lord. And that's an unusual thing to say. Most of the time when we ask for something, we ask because we want to keep it. Amen. We're not so interested in giving it back. Am I right? And so we see that this woman, though, had the idea that if God would favor her with a child, then she would do her best to bring that child and give that child back to God so that God could be able then to use him in his service as he saw fit. And so we see that now it's come to pass that she had this child, and we read to you this scripture this morning where she came and she brought a bullock and she brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh, my Lord, this is just talking to him. She says, Thy soul liveth, my Lord. I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. Just a year before, she had been begging and pleading, and he accused her of being drunk at the altar, and she needed to go home and sober up. And she told him she wasn't. She was in such tremendous sorrow over wanting a child. And he told her to go home. What you pray for, God's going to answer prayer. Just that simple. No big elaborate scheme. No smacking in the forehead. You know, none of that stuff. She, he just told her what she needed to do, and she followed through with it. And then we see that she had this child. And she comes back, and this is what she tells him for this child. I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask of him. And what a wonderful, wonderful thing when she stopped and realized how God did answer prayer. And now she brought forth a child so that she and her husband could be able to have an enjoyment so that she could be able to be favored among the, the neighbors, as it were, and, and with his other wife. And so we see here, she wasn't content just to keep that child, but she said, therefore, also, I have lent him to the Lord. I've lent him to the Lord. I loan him to God. And she says, and as long as he lives, he belongs to you, Lord. As long as he lives. I don't know how many of you have ever gone through that process, but most of my children we took to church and we dedicated, we gave them back to the Lord, told the Lord to take them and use them somehow, some way in his kingdom work. Amen. And we find that we, they're still in God's hands. I haven't taken them out. My wife didn't take them out. But we find that they're still there. And we don't know somewhere down the road what might happen, how God may be able to challenge their hearts to do something for him and for the kingdom's sake. And maybe you brought your children. Maybe you were brought to the kingdom. Maybe you were dedicated in the church. Maybe you had an old preacher brother to preach over you and to pray over you and to say, here, you belong to Jesus. And then charge mom and daddy to be able to do what they can to raise that child and the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Well, the arrival of a new member is always an exciting moment in the family. Everybody's got to get their hands on it. When our, our first great-grandbaby was born, oh, we were excited. I didn't get to be there, but my wife and my daughter were. And they were just thrilled beyond words. 
I, when my grandson was born, I was there, both of them, and I was able to see what, what life was when it came into existence there at that moment where they took their first breath. And, and there they were, and you looked at them and you thought, ah, oh, they're ugly. How in the world did they ever come into the world like this? And people would say, babies are pretty. You know, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, I looked at them and I said, wow, I just can't hardly get beyond this. And, and did you actually bring that into the world? But we made it. And now he's a big guy, a big dude, about six foot two or so, and looks like a mountain man with a bushy beard and what have you. But anyway, we find, friends, that we bring this child into the world. I was there when my son was born. And I watched it as he came into this world with his fist double up, ready to fight, and he's been fighting ever since. <laughs> I'm telling you about my youngest. Now, you can get up and tell about yours if you want to, but I, I'm telling you what mine did. And so we see that, that it was an exciting time. Grandma and Grandpa couldn't wait to get their hands on it. Mom and Dad couldn't wait to get their hands on it, take it home, and be able to hold it until you got it home and squalled all night. You know, that was just, um, maybe we should take him back. But you endure, and you will endure. You too will endure, too. The squally nights, the sick, when you have to get down beside the bed and pray and ask Jesus to touch them. When you want to try your best to direct them in the right way, and you want to turn to God's word and say, Son, here's what Jesus said. Here's what God said about this matter. And teach them divine principles, and to teach them the way of God. Get them down, pray with them, have family altar, read the scripture to them, let them memorize it, let them learn, let them start while they're early, while they're young. Let them be able to experience the spiritual values that you want them to have, maybe that you didn't get, maybe that you didn't experience. I don't know. That's what I wanted for my kids. And so we see that a new member in the family is always an exciting moment. And then it's exciting to bring that baby to church and offer him around to all the sisters in the church. They all want to get their hands on him. They want to, they want to hold him. They, they want to be able to just cuddle him in their arms. And some of the men, too, I guess. I always like to hold babies, and they were so cuddly and so cute that time, you know. And then as they grew up, they got ugly. But we find that God's able to help us as we dedicate little babies. We appreciate Howard and... Adrian coming, bringing their baby here so that we might be able to loan him back to the Lord. And I trust that when you loan him to God, you let God keep him. Through thick and thin, whatever you and Adrian go through, that your baby will be able to see mom and daddy made it through because of God. And he'll be able to grow up and do the same with his children and with those that follow after him. Well, dedication of a child means, first off, for us to teach and train the child using God's word. We want to be able to show Isaiah here just exactly what God had to say about the principle. And, and you know, in order for you to do that, you have to know God's word. And you have to be able to give him answers because he's going to ask you questions that you'll think, I have no answer for. I have no clue for. But when you get down and you pray and you say, Lord, I need an answer for that question that they ask, God then will lead you to something in his word that will help you to be able to answer just exactly that child. Always, always, when you teach him and train him, teach him and train him honestly. Teach him and train them honestly. Let them know always the truth of the matter. You don't have to go into depth. You don't have to take them down to the depth and try your best to explain all the principles behind it, but you can show them that Jesus Christ is the one that has the answer for their life and that they can be taught that way. Jesus wanted the little children to come unto him. Yes. You remember? Yes. The disciples, the old folks, said, oh, the, the children are noisy. The children are running around. The children are ragged. The, the children are carrying on, and, and we don't know what to do with them. And, and get away. We, we don't want you here bothering the master. He's got business. He, he's got people he's got to heal, and he's got people he's got to forgive, and he's got people he's got to direct. And, and, and just, you, you children, you just go away. Now go on. Leave things alone. Don't, just go on back there somewhere out there in the field and play. And Jesus said, 
No, no, no. Don't prevent the children from coming to me. Let them come. And when they open the avenues for those little children to come in, it says he put some on his lap and he touched some others. What a wonderful thought. My children would go to the altar when they were growing up, when we would go and pray with people. My children were down there with us praying. Not because they wanted to, but because I told them they had to. <laughs> so you see, you, you have to teach them that Jesus is there. He wants the children to come unto him. He wants the children so he can embrace them. He can teach them. He can guide them. He can be able to help them so that when they grow up, they'll not forget what they were taught. Amen. They'll not stray too far from Amen. the truth. Dedication is to demonstrate examples of godliness. Here you are. You're doing what you should do by your baby. You're bringing that boy to Jesus. And you're saying to everybody here, I'm bringing my child and I'm loaning him back to God for the, long, the length of his life. And, and I want you to see that I'm giving this child to him. I want you to see that I'm giving my child to him. And so I'm setting forth the example of godliness. Maybe you didn't do that. Maybe others didn't do that. But this family has chosen to do the right thing and to set forth an example for all of you that this is what should be done. Also, dedication is to discipline according to God's word. I have no... Well, maybe I better not say that. Well, maybe I might say it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with spanking a youngin' as long as it's done in love. Amen. Yeah, I know a lot of people out there in the world say, oh, you're being abusive. No, you're not. You're bringing that child, and then you're spanking him or her in order to be able to show them the right way that you did wrong, and this is the consequences of your wrongness. And then when you spank them, hear me carefully, then when you spank them, get down and pray with them. Amen. Get down and pray with them. Don't just walk away, but love them. Let them know that you did that in love. Don't ever, ever discipline your child in anger. Walk away. Amen. Go somewhere and get down before the Lord and pray and ask God, this child really upset me. I mean, to the extent I want to kill him or her just flat dead. But I want you to help me, Lord, that I might be able to show them how I can pray over them and how I can love them and how I can still guide them. Praise God forever. And that's what God wants you to do. God has the ability to, to just strike us down just any moment, friends, but he loves you and me. And how much should a parent love a child in the same manner? And so we want to discipline that child according to God's word. And we want to pray intently for that baby and for that child as he grows. I don't suppose my parents prayed for me since they were not Christians, but I had an old Sunday school teacher that used to pray for me. And she lived on the street that I had to walk to and from school. And every afternoon when I'd come home from school, she'd be standing on her front porch and she'd call me in. And she would give me a promise and she would feed me a cookie. And that was something that touched my heart. And then I, my first Bible was given to me by her when I got ready to go to Bible school. So you see, the, the influence that you and I can play in this family's life as well. God wants to help us to pray for this child. That we'll lift him up as God brings him to mind and as we see him in our, in our spiritual mind. Let's pray for this child. Let's lift him up before the throne of grace that as the years pass by that he'll not get involved in all the things that a lot of children get involved in and that God will keep his hand of mercy upon him and keep him safe from a lot of sins that are out there that maybe you got involved in and took you down the wrong path. Let's pray for this baby that that will not happen. So there's no better act of gratitude than to dedicate your child to the kingdom, to the kingdom. Well, this morning, I would like for you two to stand 
with me, if you will. I promise I'll not keep you standing very long, I hope. Let me read to us this morning from Mark chapter 10, <clears throat> verses 13 through 16. He said, And they brought young children to him, this is Jesus, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hands upon them and blessed them. What a wonderful, wonderful thought. Let me give you a charge this morning. You are about to dedicate Isaiah this morning to God and to his service. That's what we're doing this morning. And God hath declared, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son is mine. By this act, you acknowledge the high claim of Almighty God to the life and service of your offspring. Two, you confess your own obligation to the Most High God, to the church, and to your child. I trust that you fully realize the solemnity of this occasion. It's imperative. It's very, very imperative that you live the Christian life in sincerity, thereby setting an example worthy of emulation for this little boy. You will need the grace of God and the wisdom of God to enable you to discharge your duty. May you find wisdom and grace sufficient as you labor to glorify God. You should instruct your child in the word of God and strive to bring him to an early saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Guide his feet in the paths of righteousness and bring him often. This is one thing you've got to do. Bring him often to the house of God. Do you solemnly promise to endeavor to do this? Praise God. Let me have that baby. Not that I'll keep him, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Jerome, you come up here if you will, please, sir. Let us have this little fella here. This is Isaiah Nelson. Yeah, and he knows his name, don't you, buddy? No? Yes. A wonderful, wonderful young fella. And we're going to pray over this little fella, and we're going to give him to God this morning. And we're going to pray for mom and dad that they'll be faithful. Dear Lord, as we bow before you this morning, we thank you again for the precious Holy Spirit who can guide us and teach us and help us. And Lord, as we bow before you this morning, we pray for Isaiah. Lord, we give him to you even as Hannah came and gave Samuel. Lord, we praise you and thank you this morning as we give him to you that you'll take and use him and you'll bless him. And Lord, that you'll use his life for the kingdom's sake. You know all about what's going on with him. And Lord, we pray this morning as we give him to you, Lord, that you will use him for the kingdom's sake. And Lord, we pray for mom and dad. We pray that you'll touch them and that you'll guide them and that you'll help them, dear Lord, to live a life that's pleasing to you and to you alone, we ask. Thank you again this morning for your tender mercies in blessing them that they brought their child to you. And Lord, we pray that thou will guide them and let them be the parents, dear Lord, that this child will look up to for spiritual things. Praise you and thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. He's excited, shouting. Hallelujah. You can sit down now. We want to present, present a certificate to you. This certifies that Isaiah Nelson, born October 4th, 2019, in Fort Myers, Florida, dedicated to God in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, upon the request of his parents, Howard Nelson and Adrian Nelson. 
who vow before the Lord to submit this precious child to God's will and to raise him according to God's word and commandments. In the state of Florida, the city of Fort Myers, on the 29th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2019, we give this child to the Lord. Let's stand for prayer. Amen. Brother John, will you pray for us, please, sir? Yes, Jesus. We thank thee, Lord Jesus, for your love, your grace, your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for the precious yes. Lord, Lord. We thank you for the little house, Lord. We thank you for parents, Lord. Yes. And blessed Father, we need thee in our mighty work. Yes, we, we do. We just ask you, Lord, that you look down upon thy people. Yes. That you continue to keep thy hand upon them, Lord. Grant us the grace, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, Lord yes. Jesus. Lead, guide, and direct, mm -hmm. Lord. Forevermore, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you will be ever with us. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Be with us, our Jesus. Yes. Oh, Lord, be with us throughout the remainder of this day, Lord. Reach down, Lord. Yes. Jesus. Protect the protection about us as we go our separate ways. Oh, Lord God, Lord. yes. We're so grateful and thankful for all you do. Yes. So we're just asking that your blessed will be accomplished in all our lives. Continue to grant us clarity of mind, clarity yes, of heart, Jesus. clarity of speech. Continue to grant us understanding. Yes, Lord. 